What I wish all Indian couples knew before starting planning their wedding in Italy. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Svetlana from Best Indian Weddings Italy, the first and only wedding planning agency in Italy specialized in Indian weddings. Every day I help Indian brides and grooms to be realize their authentic celebrations in the most beautiful country in the world. I'm running this series of videos called SOS Indian Weddings in Italy with useful tips and advice that you won't find anywhere else. So if you are looking to host your celebrations in Italy, then please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to always keep updated with a new video every week. The topic of this week is what I wish all Indian couples knew before starting planning their wedding in Italy. And please, sorry for my voice, I had a little cold, uh, but I didn't want to miss our weekly appointment, so here I am. I often receive emails from Indian couples already in the middle of the planning of their destination wedding in Italy, asking me to help them solving some issues they're running into. And not always it's possible to help them. Sometimes there is nothing I can do for them. And every time I hear, I wish I could have found you earlier. So, I want to dedicate today's video to the aspects that I want you and other Indian couples to know before you start planning your wedding in Italy. Because knowing these aspects in advance can truly save you from making some mistakes that can ruin your celebrations. The very first thing to know is that Italian venues and suppliers aren't prepared to manage a traditional Indian wedding. And even if there are more and more Indian weddings held in Italy these days, having organized one by chance doesn't mean a planner or a venue has no experience in that. And being Indian weddings a trend in Italy, everyone wants to have one in their portfolio to have the possibility to attract other Indian couples and they are all willing to say yes to anything you ask them to make you confirm with them. But when the contracts are signed and deposits paid, you realize that you were talking about one thing and the other part understood something different. All that because they don't know how an Indian wedding is structured and what needs it has. For this reason, it's extremely important that you don't take anything for granted and explain in the smallest detail what do you actually need and how do you envision your wedding. Not only should you make clear from the beginning the timing for each event, what will happen during that event, how big the spaces should be, but also other specifics that a non-specialized planner or venue doesn't know. For example, you should explain that during your PT Howdy or Mayan, a yellow paste will be applied on you but also on the guests, who sometimes start joking and risk to stain the floor or sofas. And sometimes people even jump in the pool with the turmeric on them. And maybe the venue agreed on making you use a pool or a specific space, but then they present you a damage fine to pay because they weren't expecting that. In some other cases, they may not know that a Hindu wedding ceremony involves an open fire. And maybe your mandap is without any stage, you have to put your fire container directly on the floor, and they don't allow that. And you need to sort out last minute what to do, with your guests maybe already there, taking their seats. You know, there are many examples that I could list. And in all the cases, if the couples had checked everything from the beginning, they would have avoided a lot of stress, believe me. Another thing to know is that most Italians think that Indians coming to get married in Italy are all nabobs. And if they receive a request for an Indian wedding, it means they can increase their prices and sell you something at a double price. All that because some famous and rich Indian people got married in Italy. Every newspaper told about how grand and extravagant those weddings were. 
and especially how much they spend. And since there is also that cliché that Indian weddings are all about Bollywood movies with elephants, helicopters, rolling cross petals, rich jewelry, and a lot of money to spend, you risk being discouraged by high prices you are presented with. So, I always suggest not getting discouraged at the first issue, but keep on searching and exploring. A good thing about Italy is that there are venues and suppliers for all budgets, and going with a less expensive one doesn't always mean losing in quality. I know, people from abroad often think that it's quite easy to get scammed in Italy, and unfortunately there are many cases of that. Here it will be your duty to explore, to ask the right questions, to compare, to analyze, and to make sure you go with the right venue and the right supplier. And if you are planning your wedding on your own, we have a specific digital program where I put all this information and tools to make it easier comparing the quotes and proposals and to choose the one that works for you based on the right criteria. There is a link in the description. Another thing to know in advance is the wedding food in Italy costs more than in the UK and some other countries. I've heard many times from the couples contacting me that the food in the UK cost less and that they were expecting to pay less for the food. What can we do with that? Nothing. If you want to get married in Italy, you have to deal with that. Italians are very proud of their cuisine, and there is a valid reason for that. Not only is the Italian cuisine famous and known all around the world, but it's also fresh, with the first quality ingredients, often handmade, especially for weddings, and also beautifully presented. All that has its cost. So, it's just important to know that in advance and to consider a specific budget for the food part of your wedding. Actually, another very important thing to consider before starting your planning is that you are getting married in a different country, where not only the prices are different, but all the rules are different. Wedding vendors are used to work in a different way, under different conditions, and you may not expect all that. So, it's important that you have an open mind while approaching the planning of your destination wedding in Italy and not get frustrated. Otherwise, it would make sense for you to get married back home rather than abroad. Then you must also know that it could be difficult to sort out all the traditional elements in order to have an authentic Indian celebration. And you may need to bring some suppliers or some decor from home to Italy. Of course, I mean if you plan your wedding on your own or have a generic wedding planner who doesn't have all of our connections. As with Best Indian Weddings Italy, you won't need to worry about the thing, as we have everything you would potentially need for your event. Anyway, just consider that it's always better to put it into account. As you see, these aspects may seem obvious to someone, but when it comes to planning a wedding abroad, it's always better to start being prepared to many different situations rather than taking things for granted and thinking that everything will go as planned. This way you can evaluate your possibilities from the beginning and maybe you could even decide that a destination wedding is not the right thing for you and you are also prepared to face some difficulties on your way to not take things for granted and to clearly express your needs always, so that you don't become Brazila or Grumzilla thinking that no one understands you. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video that I hope can help you with planning your amazing Indian wedding in Italy. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to my channel, follow Best Indian Weddings Italy on Facebook and Instagram, comment in the posts, and I will be happy to answer. See you next week.